Alrighty, I have a really exciting video today. So I went to go watch the Six Flags Entertainment Stockholders Call with the Cedar Fair uh, Legacy Parks and the Six Flags Legacy Parks. And truthfully, I wasn't expecting there to be much conversation about anything other than um, obviously there was going to be some negatives to report on and they were going to miss uh, their numbers as suspected. Uh, but it ended up being a really interesting call. And truthfully, I have a lot of faith in the direction that Six Flags Entertainment Company is headed. And um, I'm going to be blatant and blunt about uh, my viewpoints and my statement. I think that Six Flags was run terribly uh, before the merger. I think most of the leadership on the Six Flags side had no idea what they were doing. Um, and that is apparent in today's stockholders call, and that was apparent in the um, call and call in and answer phase, the question period at the end of the call as well. A lot of questions coming out were, well, how come Cedar Fair Parks are doing this well and Six Flags Parks aren't? And truthfully, uh, Salem wasn't even on this call, um, which was interesting enough. Hopefully he's gone by the end of the year, um, but that's just my personal opinion. I don't really understand what he's doing here anymore uh cedar fair is clearly running the show if you've been watching the decisions being made um more specifically at six flags parks you would understand that cedar fair is a hundred percent running the show and that's their chief financial officer um and obviously the ceo of the company so i'm super excited about the direction because i'm about to uh explain to you guys in very key form because i know i am a rant and yapper um, so I am going to keep this very short so I don't bore you guys, but um, essentially, and this number I'm about to present to you guys is skewed, and I'm going to explain why. So Six Flags passes are down 4.3% um, for the year, and Cedar Fair season passes are up 9%. Now, that number is skewed because Six Flags discontinued um, one of their season passes. So if you actually take away that discontinuation of the season pass, Six Flags passes are up 5%. Their memberships are up 5%. Um, so there's still um, some lackluster um, reporting there. But um, what I'm going to um, really dive into is no matter how you look at it, and I understand there are a lot of Six Flags fans out there, and I get it. I know that um, there are some key differences between the chains and that I do have a bias um, so if you are listening to my video, just understand that I do have a bias towards Cedar Fair upper management. Um, I just want to make that clear because a lot of people will come for me no matter what. So I'm just making that clear at the beginning of the video. But essentially, I'm going to give you guys some really good information. So if Six Flags is your home park, this entire video is for you because the stockholders call had a lot of really amazing takeaways uh, for your parks. So Six Flags Legacy Parks CapEx spending will be increasing to Cedar Fair Legacy Parks levels. So to quickly wrap that, up, uh, wrap that up, Cedar Fair typically spends around 200 million to 220 million on caps, CapEx. Six Flags will be spending that as well. Um, so some of these projects will be revealed in the spring of 2025. I'm going to give you guys the exact statement from the uh, conference call uh, that they uh, point this out. While focusing on infrastructure at these legacy Six Flags parks will be a key focus, spending CapEx on brand new rides and attractions will be the main focus. And they touched on 20, 2009. Um, when parks started to do really poorly due to um, economic times and um, they invested in two key parks, uh, the Cedar Fair chain, uh, on new rides. And those parks had record attendance during a really tough economic time because of those new rides. So they were just bringing up that example to explain to stockholders on why it's significantly important to invest in new rides and attractions no matter what. Um, dining facilities and amazing rides will be the focus for a greater return on investment, ROI. Renegotiating contracts due to the power they now have as a bigger corporation. 
Six Flags is looking to develop its parks into the place to go for families and people traveling. And they touched on that with the chaperone policy. For those of you that may not know, maybe some of my Cedar Fair Canada's Wonderland viewers, um, Six Flags Parks did not have a chaperone policy similar to a lot of the Cedar Fair parks. Um, and they also had this weird surcharge. And I'm probably going to describe this a little poorly because I don't know too much about it and I apologize. But there was like a 1.5% surcharge, something like that, or a dollar, two dollar surcharge on all attra um, transactions at Six Flags Parks. Um, Cedar Fair uh, has discontinued that in the chain. And I'm going to keep referring to Cedar Fair versus Six Flags until we have the actual merged company, which they did touch on this as well, that there will be some shrinkage and readjustment and all that. When that happens, I'll start referring to it as Six Flags Entertainment Company. Right now, to describe things, it makes a lot of sense to refer to things Six Flags versus Cedar Fair in this newly merged company. But um, they want to become the place to go. And in doing so, they are talking about taking guest feedback very seriously at Six Flags Parks. And the surcharge was one of the most unpopular things um, that guests were reporting at Six Flags Park. So some really good news I'm about to talk about right now. The surcharge is gone. Some chaperone policies are being introduced at some parks that might need it so that families feel a lot safer. And they touched on families have the bigger bang for their buck to spend at their parks on top of that they talked about um dining and facilities at six flags parks um and they more specifically talked about how six flags parks had lost their wow factor that people weren't going and that when you compared a big six flags a legacy six flags park to a cedar fair legacy park that it was roughly like 50 percent lower than a cedar fair legacy park so and their key focus, and they were acknowledging this as like kind of like their big moment to really shine as a management team. And I loved this part of the conference call because you could really hear it in their voice. They meant it. It wasn't like those financial people at companies that are spitting lies just to win over stockholders. You could tell that these Cedar Fair, more specifically the CFO and the CEO, um, Richard Zimmerman, they see this as a significant opportunity to take these parks that are starting or were starting to perform very poorly um, due to guest feedback and elevate them um, back to where they used to be. Because Six Flags used to be a, a, a chain that no one could compete with. Um, their parks were doing much better than Cedar Fair parks in terms of attendance. They had a monopoly on season pass sales. Their name is a lot more known out there than Cedar Fair itself. Um, and that comes from the times when Six Flags had a really good reputation. And unfortunately now they do not have that same reputation. And that is not my opinion. That is exactly what they were talking about in this stockholders call. So some key takeaways that we are going to talk about is guest satisfaction is going to be the core principle to elevating these parks. New rides is the second one. Um, comfortably crowded. So if reducing crowds, uh, raising prices if they need to, season pass programs, bringing those back, unique high quality food and beverage, safety, park cleanliness, and park attractiveness, and staffed fully to have everything open and this is a really exciting aspect that I think a lot of Six Flags fans I see them complain about online and I would be upset at my home park as well is when you go to a Six Flags park the attractions aren't always open sometimes they're closed all day staffing isn't always the best Cedar Fair um, has committed that one of the things they really want to bring back to Six Flags is that staffed so they want to comfortably staff the parks, so appropriately staff the parks where the attractions are always open. And that is something they said on this call. And I think that was a really good call out and something that is going to really elevate those parks back up. Because if that, what they said on the call is true, and this is a reputation that Six Flags has, of course, that's going to drive people to visit less. Um, another key thing is, and we've already started to see it happen, is I didn't know this as a Cedar Fair fanboy, but Six Flags Parks apparently didn't have executive chefs. 
they didn't have food management leadership teams the same way that Cedar Fair Parks do. And Cedar Fair is starting to implement that at Six Flags Parks. And they're going to be upgrading their kitchens um, to have higher efficiency and be able to get food out there with higher quality food as well. And they're going to be introducing, and I don't know, they said this in the call. I didn't know that Six Flags Parks maybe didn't have this on the regular, but air conditioned buildings for people to eat in. And they, they stressed that they were going to add a lot more of those um, air conditioned facilities at these Six Flags parks. So that was crazy to me to hear that. Didn't know that they didn't have that. Um, but there was a really important statement that these Cedar Fair executives made about elevating the Six Flags parks and the opportunity they have. And they called it dream big, s- plan smart, and execute with precision and i'm really excited to see what they do and the more exciting thing is is six flags entertainment company i'll refer to it as that right now with cedar fair leading the show they are currently in the buying planning and purchasing phase of buying some of these six flags parks some attractions for 2025 and they said that they'll be making some of these cap x announcements in spring 2025 so i wouldn't fully expect announcements at some of these six flags parks right away i know some are um i have a feeling there's a mini dive coaster coming to one of the six flags parks um, there's probably another attraction coming to another maybe some water park additions as well but cedar fair um, executives have some announcements coming in spring as well for some of these Cedar Fair style, and they quoted that, um, rides for some Six Flags parks to help get Six Flags parks, legacy parks, back to where they used to be. So if you're a Six Flags fan, stay tuned because you're about to start seeing some epic rides as well. So I'm really excited about that. Six Flags was starting to build some really cool rides again, I will say. Like the, the mini dive coasters, they were beautiful. The one that was built at Fiesta, Texas. I think it was Fiesta, Texas. Don't scream at me if I'm wrong. Um, But that was stunning. So I'm really excited to see what Cedar Fair can bring to the table as well. So we'll start to see some of that stuff in spring 2025. Um, And yeah, so I think that's everything that I have to talk about in this video without yapping too much. Um, Hopefully you enjoyed this information and comment down below which Six Legs Parks you think will be first to see some of these legacy attractions um, that Cedar Fair is known for coming to legacy Six Legs Parks. Again, um, I'm not trying to be a total Debbie Downer, but the call was mostly about Six Legs Parks struggling and how we they can elevate the Six Legs Parks back to what they used to be known for. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Um, comment down below which you think which Six Flags Parks you think will be first to get these legacy attractions, and have a good one, guys. Bye.